Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kodash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect scattered throughout all four corners of this earth. It's just Bayan back again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And I just wanted to get into a quick lesson. And uh, Lord willing, bring out an article uh, going into uh, this man's infrastructure being pinpointed and targeted, man. Uh, it looks like they, uh, they're running low on diesel fuel, man, across America. You see, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know, is, is, is visiting this place. You know, we've been, we've been hearing um, rumors of war, you know, which we know, you know, as Akiyam and Akwathiam are fully aware that that's going to be the climax, you know, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's visitation, you know, when he, when he sends the weapons of his indignation upon this whore. You know, so the, the day's drawing there. You know, we just got to continue to measure the times diligently pursuing the second Ezra, this, the ninth chapter. Because Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai is showing us signs. He's showing his men signs. You know, from the chariot sightings, right? <laughs> to, the, to these crazy weather patterns, the uproars of the people. All the way down to, to, again, the rumors of war. There's been more rumors of war than ever. The rumors of World War III. You see? Those ICBMs are on the scene, sitting in silos, ready to be launched. You see? Hey, deliverance is right at the door. But we got to continue to measure the times. I speak, you know, speaking on behalf of myself first and foremost. You know, we're living in a time where we're seeing Mystery Babylon the Great, this great whore. You know, we see we're seeing her feeble and weak, and crumbling. You know, our forefathers. You know, if we if we go as far back as the uh, transatlantic slave trade, right? Our forefathers, as they were getting their backs beat by these demons, they would have never been able to imagine, you know, this place being in the condition that it's in today. You know, this whore, you know, she sprawled out in ICU, coughing up blood. With death in her eyes, man. And we're alive to see it. You know, so the Wadi Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for that. You know, but you know, with these, <laughs> with this diesel fuel shortage, you know, what this is gonna bring, you know, domino effect is what? Famine. You know, we know that. Because we know these what 18 wheelers, you know, that are hauling these reefer units, right? The reefer units keep the food uh 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 cold. You know, or frozen. <laughs> if they're not moving, hey, guess what? These storehouses are going to be lacking. Okay? Famine is going to be imminent. All right? And you overweight, proud Americans are going to suffer the death, okay, of famine, which is one of the cruelest ways to go. And guess what? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has that in his arsenal. And he's going to send it upon you, people, man. That's one of the scourges that are coming to you people, man. You see? And we're going to prove that through the scriptures, Lord willing, through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So before we grab that article, right, let's grab this in the book of 2nd Ezra, just real quick. In the 6th chapter, right? The book of 2nd Ezra is the 6th chapter. Um... In the 22nd verse, because this thing's going to happen quick. Okay, you people, here it is. I'm going to bring out this article, right? Here it is. This article's out. You know, you people, you know, <laughs> are so caught up in your, in your, I mean, specifically you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You know, because you heathen are through. You know, I'm referring to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay, you're caught up in your, in your American dream. Right, but here it is. 
there's articles out going into this this diesel shortage. There's articles out going into, you know, food shortage. All right, so like, yeah, there's articles out going into the third woe, right? These rumors of war, you know, these calamities that are coming, these new laws that are going to be passed, right? The CBDC situation, right? Karagma lessons from the brothers, from the elders and apostles of Great Millstone on down. See, this information is out there, but guess what? You're so caught up in your own movements. You're caught up in your own life, right? You're caught up in the American dream. So you're going to get snared. Okay, you're the one that this is going to come upon suddenly. Let's read this. The book of 2nd Ezra is chapter 6 and verse 22, and it reads, And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. You see, it's going to be suddenly. You're not going to be able to prepare for it, especially if you haven't been watching. Okay, especially if you haven't been wa watching which the majority of you Jakes are not doing. You see, you're not watching. So this is going to come upon you suddenly, you know, and the warning is going out, you know, whether you hear or forbear. You see, because that's one thing that's guaranteed. When this famine hits, you're not going to be able to, to endure. Okay, because famine, let's get this. Let's get this too before we get this article. Let's get this in Lamentations, the four chapter real quick. Lamentations four and nine. All right, you don't want to play with famine. You see, the book of Lamentations, chapter four and verse nine. And if you're not on the good side of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, guess what? You're going to fall into the clutches of famine because he's sending it. You see, they that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. Why, Lord? For these pine away, stricken through for want of the fruits of the field. You see? So you, th th those that are hunger, that uh, that are hungry, right? Obviously, um, that are suffering from famine. What you're gonna wither away, like a like a leaf that's falling off the fig tree, man. <laughs> you're gonna wither away, slowly but surely. You see, you're gonna be so weak, you're not gonna be able to breathe, man. Hey, that's a horrible way to go. But guess what? There's a lot of you people that are going to die that way, man, pursuing to the scriptures, right? And we're seeing the domino effect of that happening now. When we get this article, let me see here. Now, this is um, dated October 26th, you know, so it's from yesterday. So it's fresh off the press, right? And it's from oilprice.com. Right. And it reads, the title reads, a diesel shortage is spreading across the U.S. You see, and this is not a light thing. This is not a light thing. OK, this is this is going to this is going to create a, a detrimental effects. You know, to you people's livelihood, man. Yeah, everyone's going to be affected by the See, But those of us that are in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, we have hope. You see? Because again, this is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai uh, uh, causing this. Right? Let's continue. Let's get this. Let's start from the top, right? And it reads, a shortage of diesel fuel is spreading across the United States with one company launching an emergency delivery protocol requesting a 72-hour advance notice from clients to be able to make the delivery. Per a Bloomberg report, fuel supplier Mansfield Energy wrote in a note to its clients that conditions are rapidly devolving and at times carriers are having to visit multiple terminals to find supply, which delays deliveries and strains local trucking capacity. So here it is. These truckers are going from a uh, uh, diesel uh, fuel uh, well, gas station, pretty much the gas station. Trying to trying to refuel. You see, these gas stations are lacking diesel. Hey. Things are getting real. Things are getting real, real quick. Things are getting real, real quick, right? Let's continue on. U.S. diesel fuel stocks have been on a stable decline for months, reaching the lowest level since 2008 as of October. Currently, the United States only has 25 days of diesel supply in reserve. See that? 
only 25 days of diesel supply in reserve dated less and we can stop counting down from yesterday all right the article came out yesterday so hey so this time next month all right expect no diesel so guess what expect no deliveries of 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 food to your local markets man unless they're able to uh create a loophole right to 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 you know replenish these reserves man Okay, let's continue on. Bloomberg noted in its report that the Colonial Pipeline has been fully booked to carry diesel fuel and other distillates to the East Coast, which should ease the supply pressure, but it will take a while, with the first deliveries expected in early November. Earlier this week, Goldman Sachs warned that the diesel shortage, which is not confined to the U.S., Okay, which is not confined to the U.S. only, but is spreading in Europe as well. You see? <laughs> Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is pinpointing and targeting this power structure, man. You see? He's targeting this damn whore and all her affiliates, man. Kahala Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Let's continue on. But but it's spreading in Europe as well will cause higher fuel prices this winter. In the U.S., the bank said under investment in refining capacity and refinery closures and operation, disruptions have all contributed to the scarcity of refined oil products this year. But especially diesel, Bloomberg reported. Why do you think that is? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you see, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is moving them chess pieces on y'all, man. See? Even though y'all think y'all doing it. Refining constraints can create a sharp wedge between where crude and product markets clear, making policy management of crude supply less effective at controlling consumer prices, the bank's analysis wrote in a note. Meanwhile, The scarcity of diesel has prompted traders to start diverting cargoes with the fuel that were originally bound for Europe. Reuters reported earlier this month. So you see what they're doing? They're diverting cargoes that were originally bound for Europe and they're rerouting them to America. So you can imagine, hey, Europe, we just read up earlier. uh, this, This shortage is also affecting Europe. So how do you think they're going to feel about this? That's going to put them in a jam too. See? <laughs> See that? So, hey, this can be also um, another uh, uh, part of, you know, uh, the beast hating the whore, man. You see, just another factor. See? This can just be another factor. Right? Let's continue on. Tanker... Cracking, so like a tanker tracking data showed that at least two tankers with some 90,000 tons of diesel and jet fuel that were initially initially bound for Europe were diverted toward the U- U.S. East Coast. You see, so you can imagine that's going to cause some um, some tension. You know, especially if they're also already suffering from a shortage as well. You know, but this this whore being the bully that she is, you know, she's gonna she's on that. Give me that. Oh, we short over here now. Nah, give me that. Y'all be all right. We'll figure it out. You know, that's how this whore gets down. You know, there's gonna come a time. You know, that's why you know pursuing to uh, what Obadiah one and seven. You know, that's why they're gonna you know those that, that are in Confederacy with her are gonna turn on her, man. You see. Especially as they continue to watch and see how the bricks are getting down, you know, with with, uh, with Russia. However, you see how Russia's flexing their muscle. You see, you got China, another major superpower with hella firing power. You see? So, hey, this thing's getting real. This thing's turning up. <laughs> Salakia. Hey, this thing's turning up. Let's go back to that second edge of um, six, Salakia. 
I want to read down on that. Let's go back to that second Ezra 6. Right? Let's read this again from the top. The book of second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 22. And it reads, And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. You see, your local farms, your major farms, your local markets, okay? They're going to be found empty suddenly, okay? Through. Okay, you people are going to lose it at that point. You're only going to have what you got. That's it. Whatever you got is what you have. Whatever you have is, <laughs> is what you got. You see, hey, when that runs out, hey, you people are going to go ape shit, man. Let's continue on. And the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. You see, suddenly you're going to be afraid when you hear that trumpet. There ain't no more food. Sorry, we're closed. Uh, no, we don't got it. Oh, we don't have any more cases of water. Sorry, we're out of bread. We don't have any more meat. <laughs> you see? And that, and that, and that trumpet in its perfection, hey, when you hear those, 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 um, those sirens going off when the missiles are coming, man. See? You people are gonna lose it, man. It's gonna be too late, though. Let's continue on. Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 24, and it reads, At that time, show friends fight one and one one against another like enemies. Why? Because there's going to be no food. And the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountain shall stand still. And in three hours they shall not run. Famine. Whosoever remaineth from all those. Salakia. Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape. And see my salvation. And the end of your world. Whose world? Esau's world. Remember, Esau is the end of the world. All right? But Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. All right? That, that's actually in, above this. Um, it's actually, uh, what's that? Six, seven through nine. See, this is talking about Esau's world. Second Ezra 6 and 7 through 9. We can get it. Right? The book of Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 7, and it reads, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times, or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. See? And only the elect of Israel are going to take part in that first resurrection. Okay, that's going to come after the destruction of Esau's world. You see? Only the elect. Okay? Those that had faith and works and ultimately are going to be saved by grace. Matter of fact, let's go... Um, Let's go here. Let's go get that real quick. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 9, and verse 7, and it reads, And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith. See? Whereby ye have believed. You see? And of course, the elect is going to have, have been saved through grace. You see? Because it's written that we're saved by grace. Lord willing, we're part of that precious number. You know, but the, the those that are saved by grace are obviously, they're going to have works and they're going to be full of faith. See? It, it goes hand in hand. Right? Let's get a little more. Shall be preserved. See? You're going to be preserved. So you're going to be within the, you're going to be within, uh, you're going to be amongst, right, the calamities, right, the said perils, you see, but you're going to be confined, right, and set apart from it. You're going to be protected by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai if you're part of that precious number, if you're part of the elect, you see, and if you do have to be a mortar, you're going to be raised up first, you see, so it's a win-win, it's a right, continuing on. 
shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders for I have sanctified them from the beginning. You see, those of the elect, right? Uh, their names were written in the book of life, you know, since the foundations of the earth, man. Wrap your head around that. <laughs> you know? It's, it's all about predestination at the end of the day. You know, and Lord willing, we're probably that precious number. You know, but, you know, this is beautiful. You know, we're seeing this whore, you know, being being visited, you know, for all the evil that she has done. You know, and ultimately, you know, this thing's going to climax, you know, into a famine. You know, this is just a, a, a asset, you know, of the, <laughs> you know, of the domino effect, you know, that's going to create that famine. You know, because a famine's going to come. A famine of the word is coming, right? Pursuing the Amos 8 and a famine of uh, no food and no water. You see, it's written. This is what, a matter of fact, let's prove it. Let's go to, um... Still in second edges, right? Chapter 15. You see, this is prophecy. Which which prophecy goes into what? To say before. And it doesn't matter if you people that stumble across this video don't believe it. It doesn't matter. You see, what if some what if some didn't believe? Does that make the word of God without effect? No, man. Hey, these prophecies are going to walk you people down, man. You watch and see. <laughs> you watch and see. Two major, uh, two major prophecies are already on the scene. The Karagma and World War III. You see, this is why we're hearing rumors of World War III. This is why ICBM missiles are on the scene. You see, and Jacob's trouble is right around the corner. If you don't see it, hey, take it up with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Ask him, ask him to allow you to see. Right? Let's get this in 2 Ezra chapter 15. And um, I'm going to start at verse 55, matter of fact. Right? The reward of thy whoredom. Who's this talking about? Babylon. Okay? Mystery Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. The reward of thy whoredom shall be in thy bosom. Therefore, shalt thou receive recompense. You see, what's recompense mean? Revenge. You see, you're going to receive revenge. You see, right? Let's continue on. And revenge for everything you've done. You know what you've done. A lot of what you've done is documented. Okay? Okay? And what you've done to the children of Israel, right? The way you've mishandled us and dealt with us roughly, right? To you bombing other nations, innocent people, you know, that had nothing to do with the war. What, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, right? Transatlantic slave trade, Devil's Punch Bowl, Wounded Knee Massacre, Trail of Tears. You devils have done nothing but uh, bring evil upon the earth since your inception. Okay? Scripture said that you would take peace from the earth and that's what you've done. And you got to receive all that back twofold, man. This is why you're getting a double cup pursuing the Revelations 18. You're going to receive for what you have done. You see? Continuing on, the book of 2 Ezra chapter 15 and verse 56 and it reads, Like as thou hast done unto my chosen... See, which consists of who? The nation of Israel. Okay, our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You see, the chosen nation. Okay, the chosen people. You see? But there's a snare there because within the chosen people, there's a chosen. The, the elect. You know, see, those that are going to make it out of these said perils. Lord willing, we're part of that precious number. Right, continuing on, like thou, like as thou hast done unto my chosen, saith the Lord, even so shall Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai do unto thee. See, get ready for captivity, evil e, and shall deliver thee into mischief. <laughs> you see that? 
And when you get that word mischief, let's get that real quick. Do I got Google up right there? Let's get this real quick. Mischief. When you get this word mischief, right? We want this last definition here. Harm or trouble caused by someone or something. In this case, it's going to be caused by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Let's get some similar words. Harm, hurt, damage, detriment, ill, which means bad, impairment, trouble. Okay, this is what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to deliver you to, man. Let's go back. This is what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to deliver you to. You see? And you're not going to be able to escape it. This is what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has in store for you, devils, man. <laughs> and there's no way around it. Hey, this thing's coming to an end. The famine is right around the corner, and so are the missiles. You see? Let's continue on. Verse 57, thy children shall die of hunger. See? And thou shall fall through, and it's like it, and thou shall fall through the sword, man. Thy city shall be broken down, and all thine shall perish with the sword in the field. You see? <laughs> That famine and those missiles are going to take hold of this place, man. And whoever's left in the confines of America, you're going to get snared within it, man. See, you're going to get snared within it. If you're not protected by Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, you're going to get caught up in it. Right, verse 58. They that be in the mountains shall die of hunger. Right, y'all trying to flee, hiding out in your bunkers. You're going to die of hunger, man. And eat their own flesh, man. And drank their own blood. Why, Lord? For very hunger of bread and thirst of water. You see, this is what's coming to you people. This is what's coming. You see? That famine is coming. You better believe it. That famine is coming. And so are those missiles. And if you miss the famine... Right? If you miss the famine, you definitely gonna catch a missile to the dome. Without a doubt. Let's let's go up a uh, chapter. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 16, and verse 22, and it reads, For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine. See, this thing's a reality. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is bringing famine. See, this is why this thing's not just confined in America. Europe's also suffering from a diesel shortage. That's going to affect their infrastructure as well. And so on and so forth. You see? This thing's, this thing's going to sprawl out around the globe. Right? And the other that escaped the hunger show the sword destroy, man. Right? Those ICBM missiles, man. <laughs> Which brings me to this video real quick. From Dabu 7. Right? Check this out. This is Dabu 7. We have what some are calling a stunning strategy reversal coming from the United States military. They are saying they will no longer rule out the use of nuclear weapons against non-nuclear threats. Which now puts nukes on the table front and center in a whole lot of different situations besides us getting attacked and responding. Now, this whole Biden regime had spoke about how they were not going to use nukes unless it was a defensive measure. And they ran a certain way. They ran their whole whole thing in this election, this past election, on the idea that they were not going to use nukes and they weren't for war and things like that. Now they're showing completely different. You've seen what they did with Afghanistan You've seen what they've done thus far with the whole economic thing and with China. And now, militarily, they're openly stating with Ukraine and with anywhere else. They can respond with nukes, with nuke strikes at any time. 
So this is a bit of a game changer. Knowing that we've got aircraft out there that can deliver these nukes very quickly all around the world. We've got nukes staged in many different countries. So with this announcement, it'll be interesting to see what Russia and China say in response and what they do in response. And when we look here at what the National Defense Strategy is saying, they're saying that they're redoing all this, something they've long championed here in terms of arm control, because of bargaining threats from Russia in China. They say by the 2030s, the United States will, for the first time in history, face two major nuclear powers as strategic competitors and adversaries. Again, there's the 2030s brought up again. Make sure to follow me for more. Join me for the live streams where I break this down further. Monday and Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern on Dabu 777. Links below. There you have it. <laughs> Just more burden. You know, that's coming to Babylon. <laughs> you see? More burden. Right? That's coming to ba Babylon. Let's go to Isaiah. Let's get that in Isaiah 13. All right, we're going to start from the top. And nukes have always been on the table. Okay? Nukes have always been on the table. No matter what these devils think they're doing, they're only doing what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai wants them to do. Okay? These things were not created for no reason. These are the weapons of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's indignation. As we're going to read here in Isaiah 13. But before we get this, a matter of fact, let's go to um, let's go to Proverbs real quick. Proverbs, the 21st chapter, real quick. Right? And let's grab this. Because these devils are not in control of anything. As much as they think they are, they're not. Okay? <laughs> they're being controlled by the puppet master. Right? The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, which is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 1, and it reads, The king's heart, which that heart goes into the Hebrew word lab, right? We know this, right? Which means your mind, right? The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. You see, so he's controlling these devils in every way, in every facet. In every aspect of their movements. They're not doing anything Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai doesn't want them to do. You know what? Whether they believe that or not, or whether you unbelievers believe that or not, it doesn't matter. It's written. Why do you think they're leaning back on the sword? Because they have to. Biblical prophecy must be fulfilled. Let's go to Isaiah, back to Isaiah chapter 13. In verse 1, and it reads, the burden of Babylon. And we're not talking about Iraq, all right? We're talking about Mystery Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. This is a prophecy, right? Which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. See? He's seen a vision, which goes into what? Prophecy, okay? Which means to say before, meaning what? This is going to come to pass. Verse 2. The book of Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 2 and it reads, Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, right? And that banner is this Bible, okay? These holy scriptures, right? The high mountain is what? The hammer of the earth. Mystery Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, right? And this is, the banner is being lifted up here, all right? By the men of the Lord, right? Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand, right? Cuss these damn devils out. Right? Call them out on all their ill dealings. Right? Call them out on all their treachery. Right? On all their blasphemy, their hypocrisy. Right? Call them out on it all. Right? That they may go into the gates of the nobles. Right? The elites. And it has entered into the gates of the nobles, man. And this is, this is why they're on the, they have a smear campaign. They try to make the men of the Lord uh, uh, look some type of way. Uh, calling us domestic terrorists or, you know, just trying to label us as a threat to society. You know, but here it is. You damn devils have been in war 90, over 95% of the time of your inception, man, since, since you've been in power. Okay? 
60 something percent of the violence that takes place in America in America is by Edomites. Right. So-called white people. You see, but the point is this word, this truth, this 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 doctrine, this gospel. All right. This testimony of Yahweh Shai has entered into the gates of the nobles. OK, verse three, I have commanded my sanctified ones. Who are the sanctified ones? The prophets, you see, pursuing the Jeremiah, the first chapter. Right. I have also called my mighty ones, the angels for my anger. Even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, Salakia, the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, right? And that's the missiles. All right. This is being this is also said in the book of Joel. All right, that great people is is going into the missiles. All right. It's a dark saying, right? A tumultuous noise, right? Tumultuous goes into what? A loud, confusing noise, right? A tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts mustereth the battle. Salakia, so mustereth uh, the host of the battle. Let me read that again. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. Right. And that word mustereth goes into what? Assemble. Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai is assembling this, man. Not these damn heathen, these, 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 these wicked kings of the earth, these Edomites and these other heathens, they're not mustering the host of the battle, man. Okay? They're doing what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai wants them to do. And they have no other choice but to do it. You see? Because these, hey, these missiles, that famine's gonna come and these missiles are gonna fly. All right, thus says the Bible, right? Verse five, they come from a far country from the end of heaven what are we talking about let's continue on even the lord and the weapons of his indignation right the weapons of his righteous anger that word indignation goes into righteous anger all right and this is referring to those intercontinental ballistic missiles and what are they going to do to destroy the whole land. The whole what land? Babylon, a.k.a. America, man. See, that whole land. <laughs> right? Verse one, what did verse one say? The burden of Babylon. That land that the weapons of the Lord's indignation are going to come upon is Babylon the Great. Mystery Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, man. You see? And this is going to be the climax, okay, B between those missiles and those in the chariots of the Lord zapping everything in sight with that with those laser beams, man. That's going to be the climax of the visitation of Mystery Babylon the Great turning this land into a, a, a lake of fire, okay. And that's that's that that's a, a righteous judgment, you know, that this land's going to receive for what all the bloodshed of our forefathers that's on this land. It's going to be accounted for, okay? Whether you damn devils believe it or not, okay? And the men of the Lord, starting with the elders and apostles of Great Millstone on down, are speaking it into existence through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. You see? And Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai is going to for sure visit this place, man. He's already visiting. You see? But he's going to turn it up. All right. And this place is going to be out of there. We're measuring the times diligently. OK, because this is going is going to come to pass. All right. It may it may matter for let's close out here. Let's go to Habakkuk. One of my favorite scriptures, one of my favorite scriptures, right? The book of Habakkuk, chapter two and verse three. And we'll close out here. The book of Habakkuk, chapter two and verse three, and it reads for the vision, right? The vision, the what? The prophecies, right? For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. 
Though it tarry, right? It might take a little time. Wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwidash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. Lord willing, you Akiyam and Akwathiam were edified. Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Kal Halalim La Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwedash. Shalom.